Hi, and welcome on News Now, Belmont Journal Daily News Show and Community Update. I'm your host, Frederic Rigolo. And today we have with us Franklin Tucker, editor of the Belmontonian.com. Hi, Franklin, how are you doing? Just fine, thank you. Town meeting is still going on, and, and night three was uh, consecrated to Article 16 and a big part of the aging fuel tanks. That's right, it was. Um, uh, we have to have this in context a little bit. Number one, we all knew this was coming. This is not a surprise. Uh, um, what we had is we had three people who live near the, the uh, where the fuel tanks are, um, uh, the Sarnos and uh, Ms. Ortari, or, or um, uh, and, and they uh, uh, had an amendment uh, that would strike the use of, um, of taking uh, $150,000 from both the uh, water and sewer uh, funds. Um, and to help pay for um, uh, and added five hundred thousand uh, dollars to, so it would be a million dollars to to basically dig up the old uh, tanks and then um, uh, place uh, a new above tanks at the uh, DPW yard. Um, now we have to a little, know a little bit of back history, uh, background on this. Um, uh, this was uh, uh, the decision to build above ground tanks was decided back uh, in the late winter uh, before the uh, select board. Select board heard from both uh, the Sarnos and Artari, and they said, um, you know, we listened to your complaints, you know, the safety issue, the, the insurance issue, everything under the sun, and we disagree with you three to nothing. So what this basically is, uh, it's not following process. What it is doing is, um, taking an approach that the town is using by going to the enterprise funds to get the money to, to take the tanks out and put the new tanks in, which requires a vote. Now, if the town had decided to use free cash, we wouldn't have this issue. <laughs> but what, what the town did is it said, look, best practices tells us, you know, the Collins Center, people who, who, who are, are, you know, looking at towns like Belmont that has, that have issues with, with you know, getting enough money to do important work. Well, what you should do is you should go to the enterprise funds. You know, these are large amounts of, um, you know, so, sizable amounts of money, $7 million, $8 million. Um, uh, most of it's used to stabilize water rates and, and sewer rates. That's why Belmont hasn't had an increase in the water rate, I believe in the last three or four years. Um, but um, it should also be used, you know, uh, sparingly, but for infrastructure because it is an infrastructure um, project. Um, so what that did is it allowed, it, it had to go before town meeting to have that expenditure. And that allowed, and that yes. allowed people who lost, who did not meet the process back in the, in the, in the winter to go and say, okay, we're going to, we're, we're going to relitigate the entire process. And what that did is it now made the town and especially capital budget, which Anne Marie Mahoney is. Uh, the the uh, longtime chair, they have to defend that. Now they did. They did a great job defending it, showing you know that the insurance that an important part of the insurance can't be done. That it's much safer. And it's just as safe as above ground, even better because you're not spending a lot of money. You know, over ten years, it's a lot of money that underground tanks will have. What the uh, uh, people who wanted the who, who sponsored the amendment, the said the uh, uh, the Sarnos and Mr. Tory just had a different facts. And they said, well, we can't believe what the town is doing. You know, they're good people, but they're just, they're just giving, um, they're, they're not being honest about the facts. We have the real facts. And then apparently it became an issue where, you know, the town was saying, look, this is, this is why we're doing it. And, and the Sarnos is, are basically playing to the crowd. You know, they're saying, oh no, no, the town is wrong. The town doesn't know what it's doing. It's a, uh, it really is. We can find insurance. Well, if they could find insurance, they would have had it. So, so what happened is this became much more of a popularity contest. You know, you know. Oh, we know the Sarnos. We we know our Terry. You know, these people they want to protect their uh, their little part of town. Many people in town meeting, if you ask them if they if they had been following this, either been they had been either following it very lightly, or they've been following it from one of two two sources: one the town and one. 
Sarno. And and what the, what the important thing is, is that they also, this small group of three people, they now associated themselves with a very popular group right now, and that is the people who, who sponsor the no on, no on the override. So they basically got those people involved too. And as you can see, uh, the, uh, the amendment passed by about only six votes. And that's why, <laughs> that's why we're going to see that amendment, uh, that um, amendment come back because it is, um, they're gonna be, it's called a reconsideration of that uh, vote. And it's going to come at the end of uh, the fourth night, which is Monday, I believe. Yeah. So that was the last uh, yes turn, I think, of that story. But so uh, to summarize, the fuel tank uh, founding failed. So the the amendment was success successful. So they removed the line of the fuel tank funding. Uh, on they moved all the lines, including what was done last year, which was, which was about five hundred thousand dollars. So we're so that money now goes in the capital budget. There's a lot of things that, that they can use that money with. But again, we have thirty five. <laughs> We have a 35 year old tank in the ground and no one will insure it because these things can leak at any time. So it's going to come back next year. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, maybe in November? Because uh, maybe November, but I think I don't think that they're really going to, they're going to let this come to the annual town meeting, which is a little bit more formal. Yeah, but you one know, of the information that came up on Wednesday night was that there were already a contamination on site. Well, it was it was it was called the drips and drabs contamination. It wasn't like it was a leak. There was like a little bit of you know every time you pump gas, a little bit spills or something like that. That's a drips and drabs. You know, it's something that shows contamination. But still, it's a thirty-five year old tank. You know, it could blow up any minute. And as 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 town officials have been saying over and over again, you know, we could be looking at a multi-million dollar cleanup, closing the closing the DPW yard for a year, and then what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so just before closing on that topic, um, Monday night will be a very long night too. Oh, it's gonna uh, uh, bring your pillows. It's gonna be <laughs> really, really long. <laughs> so, next story is about forty B, and you have an update on Beatrice Circle. Uh, yes, yeah, a very interesting thing again. Beatrice Circle is tonight is the forty uh, B affordable housing uh, project. Uh, a, a very small project, really, over in um, uh, on um, uh, Belmont Hill, base, or, or it's on Frontage Road, basically. It's uh, on the on the very side of of, of uh, Belmont Hill. Uh, if you've been following it, it's, it's been contentious ever since the developer uh, suggested that he was going to build there. Uh, so what happened is that the uh, state did approve, give them a permit to, to uh, now go to the second process, and then basically go before the zoning board of appeals and say. You know, we would like to have, um, we, you know, we'd like you to uh, give us some leeway on certain aspects of the um, of the uh, uh, project. And, you know, so there's there's been meetings and, and, and peer review. And, then, and so what we saw on uh, Thursday is a peer review of uh, of the uh, nine, uh, of, of the project. Well, we, uh, what what you could tell by the meeting, which was a, another very long, detailed meeting, is that um, you know there's three things they're looking at. One is one is um, the, just the basic architecture, and that seems to be um, getting better. And I think every even the peer reviewer said they've done a really good job on that. Landscaping is another one. The one that really is an issue for a lot of the members of the ZBA is is the civic engineering and that that has to do with you know stormwater management it has to do with a ledge that has to be taken out and it's a, a great details uh it, and if you looked at it um it was the weakest point of the uh, developer's um argument i mean it's you know he he wasn't the the, the civic engineer wasn't as as advanced along as everyone else now when you look at the at the zba i think two people are are just opposed to it. Two people are, are willing to talk and um, are more receptive to it. And there's one person who's going to be uh, a real um, decision maker because all they need is a three, two vote to um, move forward. And oh. even if they, and even if they do lose that vote, they still have the upper hand because they're going to have to go back to the state and the state can then say, you didn't give them a fair shot. You know, that there's very, very few opportunities um, uh, for for towns fighting uh, 40 Bs to win, 
So as as um, uh, <laughs> as as for as um, as some people in in the town have said, you know, um, you know, you might want to try to make as you know what they are doing is they're trying to make uh, mediate uh, as much po as possible, and that's the best they can do, basically you know, um, go through mediation and, and try to make it um, as acceptable as possible. Because, you know, if it goes to the state again, uh, really, they're, I don't know where they can go. And last so a story, we have a return of summer. That's right. It's, a, it's, it's the blessed return of normality to Belmont for the summer. And what we have is we have one old and one new thing. And the, and the uh, new thing is, uh, well, the, let's go back to the old thing, uh, because of regulations and uh, um, uh, the, the, the state regulations on COVID, um, they're, they're being taken out. So it's, yes. what that has happened, what has happened is that the uh, Underwood pool uh, that was going to open at 50% is now at 100%. So if yes. you want, so there's no more going to be any more wait lists. Just go out there and just, you know, any, any resident can go out there. Non-residents, there's going to be no more uh, permit, uh, tags, as they say, passes to that. But um, right now, you know, there's about, um, you know, a little over 750 um, tags that have come out for about 2,500 uh, residents. Um, uh, it looks like it's very, very popular. You know, people have been calling the rec department about, you know, how can I get on the list? So uh, it appears that, uh, but there will be areas at the pool which will be segregated just so that if you're a little bit, you know, standoffish, yeah. they'll allow a little bit more spacing in those areas. But other than that, you know, it's going to be just a regular season. That's going to okay. be returned. So no regular. mask, no mask wearing on the lawn. No. Yeah, because it's out you know, because it's outside and it's going to be in water and you know people are um i, I there's there can always be you know because this had just been done uh yesterday uh by yeah. the rec or by the rec commission so there might be something that that is added to that but right now just call the rec department and they will put you on the list yeah, and the new yeah and the, and, new, the new and the new new thing is there's going to be a movie series uh an outdoor free movie series seven movies over uh seven thursdays and it's going to be at town field and uh it's going to happen but and, and the reason they can do that is because uh, a very generous a generous um a donation from a belmont um a family mm -hmm. who uh basically uh paid for uh, uh sound systems and, and projector and uh it's just you know they're just ready to go with this and it looks like it's going to be um and right now people are, have called up and said you know when can I get there? Is it how much money do you have to pay? Because they're going to allow people to have like dinner there, the picnic dinners, you know. But remember one thing: uh, Town Field is a carry in and carry out place. So if you're bringing a dinner, you're going to have to bring all that trash out with you. Okay, so the the cinema nights will be on Town Field. That's right, Town Field, where the baseball diamond is. That's next to the Beach Street Center. Yeah. Uh, so um, and it's going to start at six thirty, and the movie will start at eight. And there's going to be like playing for kids, and people can bring their uh, bring their um, you know tables and you know uh, blankets and uh, just have a good time and watch and and, and the movies oh just fabulous. All right, so what, what movies? <laughs> do, you, do you know? Well, where, you know, it's gonna, people it's, can it's, it's where, gonna be like people, yeah. Finding Nemo and you know uh, yes, for, for family, family movies. Family. It starts the week of July fourth. And I, I assume that all the info are on the Belmont Rec um, website? You bet. Just go into the Belmont uh, Recreation uh, site. Uh, Brendan Fitz, who is the ass assistant uh, director, has done a fabulous job on both these uh, projects. And um, uh, it's going to be, like, I, like, like you said and I said, it's the return of summer. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Yes, great. Thank you very much, Franklin. You have been watching News Now with Franklin Tucker, editor of the Belmontonian, and I'm Frederic Rigolo, your host. See you next time.